All right, guys, I, I'm on vacation. I'm here in Noosa, Australia, one of the prettiest places you could ever visit in the world. And if you come to Australia, you come to Noosa, check out one of this guy's classes. I'm joined by the legendary Matty Fox. You guys can follow him. Instagram, Matty Fox. Matty C. Fox. Matty C. Fox. And then YouTube, Matt Fox Coach. So if you guys like body weight workouts, kettlebell stuff, more functional training, this is your man right here. So definitely check out more workouts. Today though, you guys ask me all the time, hey, how do you stay fit on the road? You know, when you're traveling, what do you do? A lot of it is body weight training. It's one of those things that if you have a beach, have a mat, you know, in a hotel room, you, you could, eat. yeah, you could always do body weight stuff. And Matt does a lot of that. So tell them a little bit about, you know, the yeah. style of training. So basically, uh, I've been into bodyweight training for about three years now. Uh, I don't get into a gym, I don't really lift weights, occasionally kettlebells, and I've just, yeah, all functional training that you can do anywhere. So Steve and I decided that, yeah, we're in beautiful Noosa, who wants to go to a gym? Get out here, this is our workout view, why not do a workout here? I think it's a, it's a good place to do a workout. Got the sun, a little vitamin D, a little ocean behind us, so get a little workout, jump in there. Today's workout, 20 minutes. One of the things on vacation, you don't want to spend your whole day working out, so get after it, get your heart rate up, sweat, and then get out. So 20 minutes today, what we're going to be doing is a Tabata-style bodyweight workout. One of, the, one of the things I would do a lot on The Biggest Loser is Tabata-style workouts. A lot of people, just their body weight is more than enough. So today, we're going to be doing that, picking essentially four supersets and going back and forth, spending 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. After we complete a whole Tabata round, you have a minute rest. Yeah, and then moving on to the next superset. So yeah, each superset is going to be four minutes in total. You'll end up doing four sets of each exercise, eight rounds of that total. It's going to be sweaty. It's going to be a, a sweaty mess. Let's do it. Real sweaty. <laughs> All right, first two movements we're going to be doing for this first round of Tabata, a burpee with a squat lunge and then flutter kick. So Matt's going to demonstrate burpee, normal burpee, but instead of going right back down, boom, two lunges, one each leg and then back down. Left leg, right leg, boom, back down. You get 20 seconds of that. Once that buzzer goes off and we've hit our, our 10 seconds rest, we're in our, put, we're in our flutter kick position. You can see his feet are you know, six inches off starting, and then he's just alternating the flutter kicks. Abs are tight, legs are tight, we're not bending at the knee, we're keeping everything very rigid, keeping everything nice and tight, working those abs. 20 seconds of that, 10 seconds rest, and then we're back into our burpees. Let's get after it. All right, here we go. Ready to do it? Three, two, one. Think, oh, I don't want to work out. Definitely has gone through my mind, but just 20 minutes a day doing something. One round down. Four to go. back into the ground too and you'll feel that even more with your core engaging.
Another movement you can do instead of the flutter kicks is the leg over. So it's pretty much the same thing, just working a little bit different. Go here, back to here. Last round. One more of H exercise. Heart rate's up already. Next round at Tabata. All right guys, we're on to round two. Same principle, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds rest, 20 seconds on of the second exercise. First exercise Matt's gonna demonstrate, it's a back extension. So everything we're doing today, while we're working one group, we're resting another group. So right now, obviously working the lower back, you're tight, just like we were on the, on the flutter kicks. We're tight throughout, bringing up the shoulders, and the legs at the same time. Now, if you want to make this a little bit more difficult, work a little bit more shoulders in there, depending on your uh, range of mobility, keeping the arms out in front of you, just like Matt's doing here. Again, this is working your glutes. Your glutes need to fire. You're pretending, you know, you're, you're squeezing at the glutes, using those lower back muscles, the, spiner, the spinal erectors, and you're raising up. 20 seconds of that, and then 10 seconds rest. And we're going into our second movement, which is going to be our shoulder tap. So this is going to be pri primarily working the abs here. We're also having to use a lot of stabilizing muscles here. You can see Matt's not twisting at the hips. Show him a bad rep here. Twisting at the hips there, letting the hips sink. Everything's going to be nice and straight on a perfect rep. Let's show him a good rep right there. Boom. Just his hands moving to touch his shoulder. Really good form there. In line now, with the shoulders too. Yeah, everything's in line. The shoulders, the elbows, the wrist, all in line there. So if you make sure your palm of your hand is in line with your shoulders, you're gonna feel it in your chest and work your shoulders too. So it's gonna put obviously a lot of body weight on the shoulders and chest, and that'll bring that into play as well, as well as the core. Let's show them a modification now. Amazing. Shoulder taps are a little bit more advanced. If you can't do the, the standard shoulder tap like we were doing, go to your knees and do it. Right there. This is a nice one to do again if you can't do the, the, the prescribed exercise, we're gonna make it a little bit easier for you. And again, the muscles we're working here, pretty much all push muscles, anterior delt, tricep, chest, core. What we were working before with the back extensions, lower back, glutes, and the posterior delts, and the traps in there. So again, offsetting so we don't fatigue too fast, too early. So let's get into it. All right, round two, here we go. Posterior chain working here. If you can't get to the gym and do squats, this would be another exercise that really helps that posterior chain. all about those little muscles. Thank you. 
All about court here. Twenty seconds, then we got a minute break. Woo! Shoulders, abs, lower back, glutes. Back for round three. What we're going to do on this one, we got kick sits. This is the first 20 seconds, and that's going to be paired with frog squats. Steve's going to demonstrate kick sits to begin with. His palms are going to stick flat to the ground, and he's going to shoot through his leg. Hips going to sit down for a brief second, come back in that bare position, and shoot through to the other side. So when he speeds it up, it's going to look like that. You'll notice that when he's in this starting position, his knees are pretty close to his elbows in that bare crawl position, and he's pivoting from the hips. Now, if you want to do an abbreviated version of this, he's going to get into mountain climbers, still palms on the ground, like when we did the shoulder pat, and he's going to drive his knees forward to between his hands. So that's the first 20 seconds. Either kick seats or mountain climbers, you choose. Next 20 seconds, we're going to do things called frog squats. His elbows are going to stick tight to the inside of his knees the whole time. They're not going to leave, so tension's always there. And he's going to stand up, shooting the hands through as far as they can go. You'll see that he's not going to be able to fully stand up because of this tension, and that is going to bring the hamstrings into play as well as cook the quads. Woo! So it's just a double burn here for the lower body. This one is just straight evil because we're not actually locking anything out. There's constant tensions on your on your legs. A lot of lactic acid in this one. Biggest thing here too, I'm using my elbows and I'm actually pushing out my knees. You know, if you guys are a, a person that squats and has those knees cave in, this is a great reminder, elbows, Inside of the knees, boom, right here. You also see his heels don't leave the ground too. So toes can come off, but heels are stuck to the ground. That's a proper squat form as well. Just showing the demonstration, my <laughs> quads and glutes are on fire. Woo! Let's do it. Yeah, this round's gonna suck. <laughs> here we go. Three, two. Stand up. 
body weight stuff here. Yeah. Absolutely re reckless. Get going. Reckless. We got the final four minutes of this bodyweight Tabata. Next pair, we've got prone walkouts, which is really gonna hit your hamstrings, and that is paired with high knees, a little bit of abs, a ton of cardio. Steve's gonna demonstrate the prone walkouts. So, hips are up in the glute bridge. Then he's gonna slowly walk out onto his heels, as far as he can go without dropping the hips, and walk back in, keeping the hips up. So you're walking in, you're walking out. You'll feel that a hell of a lot in the hamstrings. See, hips don't drop. Then we're gonna jump up on our feet. I know you're really looking forward to this one. High knees, so palms are out. Hitting our knees to our palms. 20 seconds of that, we're alternating between the pair. Final four minutes. Modification on the high knees, just be a jumping jack. So, if you're really finding you can't get your knees up there, jumping jack will work. Let's do it. Last round, best round. This is our final Tabata, four minutes. Give your all.
like this workout make sure you head over to mass channel bodyweight king i'm feeling a couple of those stone and woods coming up so i'm gonna go jump in the ocean thank you guys for watching make sure thumbs it up for maddie go check out his channel